starts of the week. All right, let's do it. I'll go ahead and kick it off. If you please, guys, if you guys don't mind, please do. I I mind, <laughs> but I'm going to let you do it. Anyways. Thank you, thank you. Well, my start of the week at the quarterback position is none other than Eli Manning. Well, he couldn't have looked worse last week, but this week he gets Odell Beckham Jr. back. He faces a Philadelphia defense that I would have started him against regardless of the coaching situation. And now you just throw in another uh, variable. The team is kind of in shambles, and the defense has not been good. So I like Eli Manning to bounce back in a big way against Philadelphia and come out and uh, light it up. Yeah, I like Eli Manning a lot this week for every reason you just said, uh, especially coming off of bad games. People don't want to start him. I'm going to go with a guy based on a game, and that's Drew Brees. Drew Brees, Atlanta has statistically a good passing defense. They've had some low-scoring games, but Vegas has this game as a super high-scoring game. It's the last game of the year. I think this is going to be a game where you just have offenses putting points on the board left and right. I want pieces of that. Drew Brees, Willie Sneed seems healthy. Brandon Pieces Cooks of is, Breeze. Ba- Brandon <laughs> Cooks has been on fire. Uh, you've got good tight ends there. So give me Breeze this week. And I will take the yin to your yang. I hear it. And I will go with Matt Ryan. Uh, the the over-under, like Jason said, is just too delicious to sit Matt Ryan down. We've seen the Saints uh, allow multiple touchdowns in games of, I mean, games of four touchdowns. Uh, we remember the Saints versus the Giants. It's just happening weekly against two, the Saints defense. Two traditionally prolific fantasy quarterbacks facing off in a meaningless game. Yeah, to finish the <laughs> let's year let on, it rip to, to finish the year on a high note. Plus so. the 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 small caveat of maybe the Falcons with nothing to play for. Maybe they force feed Julio Jones for that catch record. It's very good for a quarterback's production to force feed Julio Jones. So <laughs> they should have figured that out earlier. Yes. You know, Matt, well, I, Matt Ryan has has fallen. We were looking today, the the roster uh, in the MFL 10 I won. I had two quarterbacks. They were Andy Dalton and Matt Ryan. And then the surprise of that was that I took Matt Ryan in the seventh and Andy Dalton in the 15th. Yeah. I was like, hmm. Matt Ryan has been. <sighs> yeah, he was my Sad biggest times. quarterback disappointment this year. Sad times. My well, running back. St- oh. I'll just do mine real quick okay. because it, it ties into that game. Sure. So I'm going to go with Tim Hightower. If there's any doubt that he's the guy. CJ Spiller was on IR and last week happened. Okay. 27, <laughs> 27 for There's one, doubt, 22 and two, three for 47 <laughs> through the air and no good reason not to give him a monster workload. So I love Tim Hightower. Start him with confidence. Start him over almost any running back that you have. I think the only people I would start ahead of him would be Devonte Freeman, Adrian Peterson, and, uh, you know, right on the fence with probably Gurley. And maybe one more, but yeah, Hightower is at the very, very top of my RB1 list. Consensus on our rankings this week, he's number seven. That'll so if, work. You, if you have three running backs of the top six, then go ahead and start those guys. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> sure. My running back start of the week, Rashad Jennings. Wow. Rashad Jennings has had over 100 total yards the last three weeks. Uh, Philadelphia is 29th against the run. They're allowing 130 yards a game on the ground they the Giants have uh finally I mean we're uh way to be a little bit too late here New York but they've finally realized maybe we should let uh a good player get into the flow of the game and get him some some real carries now uh I mean this one's a little riskier clearly but you're in a situation where there's just not a uh there's not a lot of great matchups for the middle tier guys that I'm liking, and Rashad Jennings is one that jumps out. So I, I like him this week. Yeah, one guy that I'm going to start this week, I I actually have him slated one spot ahead of Tim Hightower, who I love, is Darren McFadden. Walk DMC himself. <laughs> uh, Walk DMC. So Darren McFadden. <laughs> casually stroll. <laughs> casually stroll DMC. <laughs> Darren McFadden, last week I was I was touting the 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 fact that he had two back to back one hundred yard games and Buffalo had given up four one hundred yard games in a row. The trend was broken as he only got ninety nine yards. Oh, what a disappointment. He did not get into that triple digits. But this week he's facing Washington. He basically has three hundred yard games in a row. Washington is resting their starters on both sides of the ball. You know, towards the end of this game, you're not gonna you're not gonna have their best 
defensive players out there. Washington doesn't need a win. The Cowboys need some respect, and I think it's going to come through the legs of Darren McFadden. I think Dallas – Right through his legs. <laughs> Dallas is going to be interesting for the running back position this offseason. They were very interesting last year, and nothing actually really happened. They added Darren McFadden. But will they – Will they do it again? Will they punt and roll the dice and say, Darren McFadden, you're our guy? Or will they shoplift a guy from another team or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jordan Matthews is my wide receiver start of the week. I'm hopping into the flames. You got to hit that button. Oh, the garbage man can. <laughs> <laughs> you got no problem with that. I think Eli Manning's going to light it up. I'm sure there'll be plenty of time for Jordan Matthews <laughs> to get involved late. The game after the game with Jordan Matthews. Listen, the game after the game. whether or not, I don't care where he gets them. Eight for 159 and one, six for 104 and one the last two games. Now he faces the 25th best defense against wide receivers in New York. He Wor should be worst? good to go. 25th worst, right? Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Or well, no, I'm right. 25th. Yeah, you're, yeah, messing, you're, you're messing it up. Well, because it just sounds the like. The 25th ranked defense that, against yeah. fantasy wide receivers in New York. If, if, if the Saints-Falcons game is a fantasy bonanza, then the Eagles-Giants game could be a fantasy bonanza as well. I'll tell you what Jordan Matthews hates, and that's litter. Yeah? He does not like garbage. Oh, the garbage man can. So he picks it up, and he carries it into the end zone with him and scores. He stores all his fantasy Touchdown. points uh, in, in one of those, like, the squirrel uh, pouches. Until the end of the oh, game. Oh, his cheeks? Mm -hmm. he's and then at the very end the of the game. squirrel pouches? <laughs> the cheeks. You couldn't, you couldn't think of the cheeks? They were squirrel pouches? You're, you're not a kangaroo. You're touching your cheeks. <laughs> you're literally these, uh, these squirrel pouches here. The squirrel uh, is not a marsupial. <laughs> All right. I'll go with my uh, wide receiver start of the week. Pooped in his big boy pants. All right, all right, m moving on. I'll, what's I'll, this? What's this thing on my face in this pouch? <laughs> I'll tell you who doesn't. Mouth. It's a mouth pouch. <laughs> you don't uh, know what a mouth. Jordan. My Jordan, mouth pouch. Breaking my news: Jordan pouch. Matthews has <laughs> mouth patches. Patches? I, dude, we are falling off apart. Road. All right, let's talk you about. You guys could have just let it go. My no favorite uh, guy for any trivia. It's Eric Decker. This week's start of the week. Uh, I'm pretty confident he's going to get a touchdown this week because he does it every week. He's only had three games this year without a touchdown going up in a game that they must win to get into the playoffs against the Buffalo Bills, whose pass defense has not been the best. I expect him to do what he does, which is going to get 75 yards and a touchdown, have a great game. He is, if you're talking about it, you know, your third wide receiver, your flex option, uh, wide receiver two, he's worthy there. He's just so consistent. It's hard to do any kind of a flyer over a guy who has been that solid. Start him, get a championship. If you were in a half point or full point PPR league this year and you got to flex Eric Decker every week, you were living large. Er Eric Decker right now in a half point PPR is the wide receiver 12. Yeah. He is a number one well, wide receiver. And we read it yesterday. He also gives you a very consistent line every week. It's not an up and down Deshaun Jackson type of line. It's just a involved touchdown. In a in a half point touchdown. PPR, how many single digit, like nine point guess, nine or less? I'm gonna guess zero. You are correct. Yeah, zero. He had single digit game. Not had a single digit game. Yeah, all that's why year I said long. flex wise. Oh my goodness. Uh, I mean, my, wide receiver two, you're fine, but flex. Oh. What, yeah. What do you want oh. better than a guy guaranteeing <clears throat> you double digits? My wide receiver start of the week. I'm also reaching a little bit lower for this guy with nasty, nasty Nate Washington. Cecil Shorts has been ruled out. For the Texans, the Texans are playing a game that it's it's not a must win, but they are playing for the playoffs. It's a must win. Well, I'm saying as of right now, it's a must win sure, to make the playoffs. Sure, if they lose and then 15 other things happen, <laughs> then they're out of the playoffs. But so they're playing to win yes, is what I mean. That is actually uh, that's accurate. So they are playing to win. <clears throat> they're playing against Jacksonville. The Jacksonville defense, similar to the Saints defense, uh, likes to allow. A, a large amount of points on a frequent basis. And I so I just – I like Nate Washington, especially as a guy that I can almost guarantee is on your waiver wire if you are uh, – you don't like your options. I think Nasty Nate could give you some nice upside When this Cecil week. Shorts was out earlier this Cecil year – Cecil Shorts. Cecil Shorts. <laughs> when he was out earlier this yes. year, you saw Nasty Nate Washington have some great games, and I believe he had them with Brian Hoyer, who's back. 
And I'm going to make a, this official. I'm changing my stream of the week from Sam Bradford to mm. Brian Hoyer. He nice. is my stream this week. I would stream him over Bradford. My tight end start of the week, Zach Ertz. People, listen. Love it. Listen, Zach Ertz, this is what he has done the last three weeks. 98 yards, 78 yards, 122 yards. He's he's broken out. I mean, this is a a pretty quiet breakout that I th- I think that is not getting enough due e- even from myself. I will I'll put some I will shoulder some of this blame. Should have been pushing him harder. He's a guy that we have uh we loved in, in the off season. He was a top tight end target for us before he got hurt. Uh so it, he's really getting it going and I expect that to continue in a game that could have a lot of points scored. So Zach Ertz, my tight end start of the week. Yeah, he's a talented guy. Him and Andy start of the week were the two tight ends preseason that we were talking about the most. So there's well, your segue. Okay, yeah. My tight end start of the week is Travis Kelsey. He's taking on Oakland. He's only started right now in 58% of leagues. And last week he had uh, – last two weeks he's had six catches each week. He actually got in the end zone last week. We know he had high hopes for Kelsey, but that doesn't mean you can't roll him up out there as a reliable target right now. Oakland is 30th against the tight end. And this is an important game for Kansas City. They can take the division – Yep. Only if they win this game. So I, I like that start with Travis Kelsey. Yep. What's hilarious for Travis Kelsey, uh, he he was a guy that I loved. I tried to get him everywhere. And and yet I felt disappointed. But the guy on the year, seventy one, eight hundred and sixty five and five. I mean that's that's a good tight end stat line. But you're just disappointed. Well, you're disappointed simply because you thought top three, maybe. Yes. But it is a great year and I cannot unsee the windmill air guitar oh, down the sideline from week one that pretty it should have been given bonus points in fantasy oh, leagues for sure at least a plus two if you haven't seen that make sure you look it up yeah, so Tra- Jay- travis kelsey is the number six tight end right now he's the top half yep tight that's end what you like yep. you're like man travis right, i think kelsey. you're more disappointed than owners probably are because right. sure unless sure, he unless they drafted possible. him really high all so. right the guy that i'm going to start this week is really a a, a, a boat of confidence because he a boat of confidence that's what i heard you're, you're as opposed to a vote of confidence no uh, you're coming in on your boat yeah your dinghy R- ride it in it's a canoe so you're on a boat of you're I'm on a, a boat of I'm confidence the canoe boat, of confidence the, the confidence canoe <laughs> the confidence canoe is coming in <laughs> and guess who i got on it with me who benjamin watson that's me, strange benjamin, well he's a better rower than i am i better be a big canoe <laughs> yes <laughs> it's a very big canoe it's We're not a, need a bigger boat it's not a confidence. kayak here all right so here's the deal last week he came out one reception for five yards. If you're in a half point PPR, that's one total point. That is not a boat of confidence. That is not a boat of confidence. <laughs> you're out but of the, the canoe, man. The truth is he has been very consistent for a long time. He's involved in the passing game. There's going to be a lot of points coming up. And if you watched the game, this is one of those things you don't see on the stat line. He had several plays, uncharacteristic of Benjamin Watson, where he dropped good passes and – that he has very good just hands. Just an outlier performance. Just an outlier performance. I mean, he was still involved in the game. He wasn't – it's not one of those things where it was like they were running the ball so much with Tim Hightower where Benjamin Watson couldn't be valuable. He was actually very used. He had himself a bad game. I'm fine playing him against Atlanta. The canoe of confidence. I like confidence canoe. But either way. I like boat of confidence <laughs> because it sounds ridiculous.